So hello everyone. My name is Eric Nunes. I will, I will talk about uh, automating secure boot testing. So I work for Red Hat. I used, um, I'm in the kernel QE team for uh, hardware enablement. Uh, I work mostly with ARM platforms, ARM servers, uh, Red Hat support for ARM servers. And after some time, I started picking uh, firmware testing. So I worked with uh, firmware update testing, uh, UEFI related things, and also secure boot. So as you most people have worked about, have uh, heard about Secure Boot so far. So Secure Boot is a technology uh, where the system firmware has a database of keys and it will only boot the next phases of boot if the, the bootloaders or next phases of the boot are signed by some key that is known by the firmware. So we have uh, pretty much every major distribution follows the path that is uh, in this diagram. So we have UEFI firmware, it contains a database of keys. It will load, uh, in this case, shim. So shim is something that uh, we need for secure boot support in Linux distributions because pretty much every computer or laptop that you can buy today will only come loaded with Microsoft keys. So in order to not have everyone load, um, load the Fedora key, the Red Hat key, or the Ubuntu key, or whatever in, in our laptop, um, to make Linux distribution just work, we just uh, have the shim that is um, some small bootloader that is signed by Microsoft, and it will contain the keys to load the whatever you need to load for the rest of your distribution. So we load the UEFI firmware, loads the shim that is signed by Microsoft. We can load that because Microsoft keys are probably in your laptop already. Uh, and then the shim contains the keys for distribution. For example, Red Hat keys to, lo to load the grub that is signed by Red Hat themselves. Uh, then the Linux kernel that is also signed by us. We don't need to rely on Microsoft signing every release that we do for all of those other components. And so. Some other thing important mentions that, for example, kernel modules have to be signed to, otherwise you could load unsigned kernel modules that could run arbitrary code in your kernel, and secure boot would be uh, moot at all. So some of the problems that I have to, dealt, have to, to deal with is that it's difficult to automate uh, testing for secure boot, because pretty much every firmware from every vendor will have different menus. Um, different settings, different names. For example, it can be secret boot or only load signed, bi signed binaries or something completely different or maybe just a graphical user interface for that. That is not really uh, helpful to do automation for that. So not only for enabling uh, secure boot, we may also have to do the same thing for lo loading uh, custom keys that we may need for another steps like testing, for example, that kernel module signed with custom keys work. And that's why uh, before I, was, uh, before I started working with this, we didn't really have any secure boot automated testing for, for, for example, CI uh, that will test for every uh, beta release, for example, that we do, that secure boot would be working completely. And if anything fails, for example, if um, a key, uh, some signing step is broken, or if we have a grub rebase, for example, that has uh, some broken code that will fail to load the, the Linux kernel, for example, or, or verify the signature correctly, uh, then we wouldn't catch that. We would only catch that much later with some manual testing. So if you load the, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux installation guide, something that we need to do, uh, and this is uh, part of what I want to automate, is that we first we need to disable Secure Boot. So for example, having a machine where Secure Boot is enabled at all times, and I would just uh, test many times on that same machine, is not something that is feasible. We need to disable it and enable it every time, and that's part of the problem as well. So first, we need to disable it, uh, install it. Uh, by the way, this is for the, the beta uh, releases, not for the, for the final release. But that's what I need to test anyway. So first, you need to disable it. Then you can perform the installation uh, as normal. Uh, then uh, you, you need to load in the keys. For example, this is using the mock which util, uh, user space utility for that. Uh, we may use that or not. For example, we may just load in the keys directly in the firmware. And then we need to reboot, and then we have the secure boot system installed. So the first solution that we attempt on that uh, is to, to test on, uh, on virtual machines using OVMF. The biggest advantage of using uh, OVMF for that is that uh, it stores the variables in the, the NVRAM file. It's the OVMF uh, virus file. Uh, but the OVMF virus file is a template provided by OVMF themselves, and basically if you use something like libvirt, it will copy the OVMF template, uh, virus file template to uh, 
machine-specific directory, and it will use that. So it's possible to manipulate that file to have a machine where secret boot is enabled in firmware uh, or not, for example. We can do that from the host machine. Uh, and then we can accomplish uh, installing with secret boot disabled and then in automated and programmatic way, enable it and then boot the machine again with secret boot enabled. Unfortunately, there is no way to do that. Uh, there's no tool to do that with the like some user space tool that will go and tweak the file to just flip the bit that will make secret boot enabled. So a workaround for that is to have a pre-prepared file of uh, NVRAM file that will have secret boot enabled. So like, we can just install it with secret boot disabled and then just copy over a file that has all of the NVRAM settings with secret boot enabled and all of the keys loaded. And then you can just boot the machine again and we'll have secret boot there. I just wanted to mention here that we're using a tool called Beaker for that. It's a Red Hat community project. So Beaker, Beaker is great for hardware enablement testing. It allows you to uh, locate a machine that has, for example, some PCI hardware that you need or that has number of cores or certain amount of memory or certain architecture. And then you can just send a query and it will reserve a machine for you or just run a set of tests that you have for that. So I have a set of tests that uh, We'll verify that secure boot uh, is enabled, for example, that we can, uh, and I have plans for extending that. We'll see that later. But basically, I have some bigger tasks that will do that and some machine that we reserve. It also takes care of installing new systems, which is great, and has support for the virtualized workflow that we need for uh, secure boot testing in virtual machines. So this is the outline of the solution that it, I have currently implemented. We kickstart uh, a machine, basically you do a Red Hat Enterprise Linux installation with, uh, on the host and then on some guest machine, Beaker will automate that for me. Uh, then you some, perform some sanity checks that UEFI is, is uh, in use and secure boot is disabled, that we should make sure for that for the, for the installation uh, for the first time. After that, we switch the guest environment file and then we boot the guest again, and secret boot must be enabled. That's basically the first step, and it works. So it has some problems that, for example, um, multiple releases of uh, our distribution may have different keys, so I may, have, may need to have different NVRAM file for every different configuration or, or release. Beta, beta keys may not be the same as well, and still did not solve the problem of adding custom keys, for example, for testing a custom kernel uh, module signing which is something that we also want to cover. So a different solution for that is that uh, OVMF also, provide, also provides this uh, small EFI application called enrolldefaultkeys.efi. Uh, basically, it's an EFI application that you can run from the UEFI shell. It will um, enable secure boot and enable uh, some keys as well, like the Microsoft keys. And this is a bit handy. Uh, I, I'm, for example, may used to do that to avoid having to have a uh, NVRAM files pre-prepared. However, it has a hard-coded set of keys. Uh, it still doesn't solve the, the problem of custom keys for custom kernel modules. And some OVMF builds may, may have the UEFI shell uh, disabled, actually. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, so I may have to use something else like the UEFI shell at ISO, which makes the setup a bit more complicated. So our proposed solution going further is to Every, every time, patch the enroll default keys.efi, uh, add some newer keys, rebuild the application, and then repeat the step that you had for solution one. So that's pretty much it. Uh, for future plans, as we are using Beaker, for example, we can have other Beaker tasks that will do uh, loading out of three kernel modules signed with custom keys. I can do that if I, if I have the patched enroll default keys.efi application. The mock O tool is also not automated as is uh, described in the manual. These tools are a bit difficult to automate because they require uh, manual steps. There, there's no way around that. So you may have to deal with expect scripts, for example, or py expect. It's something that I really didn't want to go there. Uh, there's also FWTS, which is a firmware test suite. It's uh, maintained by some people at Canonical. It's a great tool for firmware testing. Um, I, I'm interested to see how that works in the secure boot environment. There's also ARM64 support. Um, so actually, ARM64 support for secure boot is a bit, um, I, I don't know how, how the state is right now. There are some political issues, for example, with Microsoft 
uh, not allowing you to disable secure boot for our ARM platforms, which is different than the X64 where you're mandated to be able to disable it if you're physically present to the machine. And KXAC is something else that we need to test there as well because um, it doesn't make sense if you have a secure boot environment that you were able to just KXAC to a totally different kernel that is not going to care about secure boot at all. So that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, thank you for coming and hope you have some questions. So Microsoft provides a service where you can send them a binary and they will verify that it complies with the secure boot and then they will sign it and give it to you. So I assume if you malicious user send them a binary that will be signed and will load um, something with a different key, you could break that, but it would have to to be signed by Microsoft anyway. So Shim, for example, the Red Hat build is on, only signed because it complies with the thing that will, it will only build other signed binaries. You can't um, have something signed by Microsoft that will just boot anything. Right, yeah, sorry, I forgot to repeat the question. Both questions are about Shim, actually. So, yeah, Shim, Shim contains the, the keys to be able to, to boot the, the other stages of booting. Does it mean that Microsoft uh, does a code review on, uh, on this Shim before they sign it? Or? They should do verification that the binaries that they are signing comply with the secured boot. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't understand the question. Do newer ARM systems include Microsoft key, Microsoft keys? So, if uh, new ARM systems will include the Microsoft keys as well, is that the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm not sure about that. I think it's not a resolved issue yet. Uh, the systems that I deal with are not coming with uh, Microsoft keys, but they are mostly prototypes. I'm not sure you can buy an actually uh, ARM-supported server uh, yet. For example, it is supported by, by Red Hat. So I think even if they do, there, there are still some issues, for example, for booting Linux, because it, it's not totally compliant with booting just anything. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not able to answer you better than that. Okay then, thank you.